Arms. Hey guys, what's going on? Corey here with Coat of Arms, and I am at Bullseye, not London anymore. What, right. what do we got now, Ken? Yeah, it's Bullseye North has been the new name you've changed now. So kind of going from the local name that it was, Bullseye London, we're now looking to be more Canada-wide, and hence the new name change to Bullseye North. And I mean, a lot of people know you for precision rifle shooting. I mean, you compete at an extremely high level. And uh, coming to your store, I mean, no surprise here to mm -hmm. see the vast variety you have here in terms of different rifles at different varying levels. Yeah. So, dude, you blew my mind when I walked in here. I'm like, what? You have this and this and this. Maybe talk a little bit about some of the cool models here that we don't typically see. Yeah, I mean, for sure, um, the precision rifle discipline, obviously, I'm, I'm biased towards it. That's my love, right? Um, I've been, been shooting that discipline for years. And so, you know, without saying it, obviously, we, we tend to cater to a little bit more of that, that product as well, too. You know, that's my favorite discipline. I'm well versed in it. And there's a need for it in the market. And we've seen uh, precision rifle in general throughout Canada grow. And, and you've seen it just not in Canada, but US and all over the world that more OEM manufacturers are jumping on board and, and going with either you know specific rifle chassis or builds or paying attention attention to detail to what the shooters want competitively and we try to offer a little bit of all that to our customers well whether it's a full-blown you know precision rifle build you know high-end like the Kdex or you get into something like the Savage 110 Elite uh, we've got some PGW stuff here as well too and you have other companies like Ruger and Bergera that have come on board with their uh, factory offerings as well too which have been really 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 good so you have everything from the budget-minded individual to someone who wants to spend you know custom gunsmithing dollars uh, to put something together to be competitive with, well, I kind of cover the whole gambit here. Well, and you guys have a variety of every kind of discipline and firearm here and knowledge and expertise. And I think the thing I love about coming to places like this is I learn something new all the time. We're just talking a little bit about F class and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm learning something new. We talk a little bit about F class and you know, people want a half minute gun or you know, at what level does it become you know, enough or do you need to go a little bit further? And maybe talk to people about that because a lot of people had no idea and I learned a few things from you today. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, everyone has their own version of accuracy and some people are okay with a gun that shoots, you know, a minute of angle at 100 yards. Depending on the discipline, that may not be good enough. And for me personally, you know, whether I'm playing the precision game or F-class game, it needs to be, you know, half minute or better. And to be honest, my guns usually shoot better than half MOA, especially when we start talking about F-class. Um, the amount of talent that's out there, especially when you get shooting on the national level, but the world level is, is, is crazy how good the talent is and how good everyone's equipment is and their ammunition. So it needs to be a quarter minute gun. And if it's not a quarter minute gun, you may not be competitive at the world level, right? A minute, three quarter minute, half minute might be okay for you shooting pot cans with your buddy out in the back 40. But depending on how deep you're chasing the discipline may dictate on really how good your gun needs to be. Now, don't get me wrong, the guy pulling the trigger always has something to do with it, but uh, having good equipment up front really, really, really helps with a lot of things. On that note, for those people out there that may or may not be familiar with the different disciplines in precision, can you give us a breakdown of kind of the different ones? You, we mentioned bench rest and F class and, mm -hmm. and the PRS circuit. Can you and then and then rimfire as well? Yeah. Can you uh, break it down for the people out there that may not be as familiar with the different dis disciplines and kind of uh, an idea as what that might look like for them to get involved? Yeah, I mean, uh, some depending where you're located, certain clubs will maybe focus on more. Uh, uh, disciplines versus another. Uh, bench rest is one of them that you uh, that you mentioned and there's a lot of clubs in the area that are bench rest and bench rest is generally a uh, discipline that's shot. You know, you're shooting for groups, tight groups in, in bench rest, whether it's uh, 100 or 200, 300 yards, right? And generally you see the uh, bench rest shooters, you know, they've got their specific caliber and equipment that they're using for that. Uh, F class, a little different end of the spectrum because now we're going from short range to long range. So you're talking about engaging, you know, basically a bullseye target, at, you know, 800, 900,000 yards, and you know, that thousand yard bullseye is about a five inch circle. So that's a pretty small target of those distances. So having good ammo and good marksmanship and good, good 
equipment in general, really, you know, you got to pay attention to that, along with all the environmentals and everything that goes along with it, right? Um, so, you know, that's a unique discipline in its own. And then, of course, you get into uh, precision rifle or something like the PRS series where, you know, we're shooting steel targets, random distances, off of barricades, you know, out of vehicles, different things like that. And it's a time stressor and it's a round count per stage. And you're doing that at varying distances that can be like 300 to out past a thousand yards and then you still have all the environmentals to play with so you know that's a whole different discipline as its own a little bit more fast paced right um so lots of different stuff and then with that center fire version of prs is what's really come to the market lately has been rimfire precision rifle and you know we're taking everything that we do with the big center fire gun and we're just shrinking it down small scale so we're still shooting steel targets off of barricades and all sorts of weird obstacles but we're doing it with 22 rifles out to maybe 300 or 400 yards right so it's uh that's been giving us guys that do the center fire discipline somewhere to train and practice but it's also grown the sport in the industry and the equipment huge over the last two years because it's really coming up and you're seeing people really focusing on rimfire now. The ammunition companies and the ammunition that's available out there, different factory uh, manufacturers offering, you know, kind of precision ready chassis style guns in a rimfire application to do this type of thing, so. What do you recommend for somebody, you know, I'm, I'm brand new in the market here, I'm looking for a 22. Where do you start me off here at Bullseye? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always it's always a little bit of a loaded question because I always ask guys, well, what's your budget? And I'm not going to ask you what's your budget just so I can try and sell you the, the most expensive thing again, but budget is, budget is a realistic thing, right? So if you're kind of a guy that just wants to start to dabble with it and you want to try and keep things on the lower end of the budget of things because you don't know how deep you may fall into this hole, then you know there's lots of economical options with just going with a standard, you know, Savage Mark II or your standard CZ 455 or 457 rifles, which you can usually get into that, you know, anywhere from like four to $600 mark, right? Then if you want something a little bit more tactical or precision chassis oriented, then you start looking into like the Ruger Precision Rimfire Rifles, Bergera HMRs, and you can go from there and you can go all the way up into some full on custom builds like Voodoo Gunworks and a lot of these other companies that are offering full, you know, high, high end, you know, custom made rimfires to play this discipline. At what price is that one at? Um, generally, when you start talking about Voodoo, right, like the Voodoo uh, Gunworks rifle, you're starting to talk about like that $2,500 mark just for barreled action. So add your trigger, add your stock, add your optics, things like there. So there's two very varying ends of the spectrum. You can go economical and you go really high end. Someone for myself, you know, I take my rimfire rifle and I replicate it to my centerfire rifle so the training is seamless between the two. So I can shoot a ton of rimfire and it feels like I'm shooting my 6.5 Creedmoor and the chassis, the guns, the scopes, everything's the same. So I may have a little more invested in my 21 or my 22 rifle, but I use it as my training aid for my centerfire stuff as well too and have a ton of fun doing it. So you're talking a little bit about like the guys who run like a pistol caliber carbine and for training compared to their, their AR, or 22 caliber AR. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, and that's just it. I mean, you use it, we can use it for not only a training tool, but an economical method to actually get into a discipline. And what's nice with the 22 rimfire thing specifically is that you know we don't need to find a thousand yard range to shoot a match you know you can you can work well within your means with you know 300 meters of distance which you can find at you know your local club if you, there's some good local clubs in Ontario that have got those types of distances or if you've got the private property to, to shoot on you know that's easier to find 300 yards or a thousand yards where you can shoot 22 at that type of discipline so that's incredible, man. Well, um, I do understand you also have, uh, you had plans for a range, and I know that those have been put on hold temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, what, maybe talk to a little bit about that, because I know everybody is always interested in a brand new range, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the range project, it's no secret. We've, uh, you know, we leaked that information a year or two ago, saying that, you know, this is what we're looking for. We were, we were planning to build a range and have a new club for everybody to go to. Obviously, you know, there's always delays with construction and different things that are out of your hands, and just can't sort of have come up to the point now with the current COVID stuff going on and the OIC that, you know, things got put on hold again. So the plan, of course, is still to make that happen. I mean, we want to be able to offer a facility and a range that's going to be, you know, top tier and state of the art and leading edge for a club members and people in the public to come and use and check out and, and, and play with all the toys that they want. Not only that, but 
expand the sport and grow the uh, the popularity of the firearms industry as well too. So it's still still in the plan to make happen. It's just it's going to be a bit more of a timing thing until we get more straight answers from you know what's the government direction going to be, who's going to be in power, and what are they going to do, and uh, and obviously this COVID thing or you know the uh, having indoor club places to 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 go to with this whole COVID thing going on right now. You know, it isn't really smart business-wise to uh, to maybe uh, invest in something like that at the moment when there's a lot of uncertainties at the moment. So I think once a lot of these uncertainties get pushed away and we're more clear what the future holds for us, then we can continue to look forward and go. But in the meantime, Bullseye North still plans to uh, to grow and service the customers and, and carry on nationwide. So. So, I mean, you guys have always been uh, huge supporters of our communities, supporting, um, you know, any of the people like the CCFR fighting mm -hmm. the good fight. Um, what tips do you guys have uh, maybe to the people about how they can, you know, get involved or be able to get other people involved? To it's up to us to, to you know, get our youth involved, you know, get our neighbors involved and, 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 and show them exactly what it really is all about. I mean, this industry is phenomenal. There's so many people that are so nice and willing to help everybody. And you know, and we all have to get behind uh, people to, that are fighting for our rights, like the CCFR, and uh, and support them as well too. Because you know, we need people fighting for our rights against these government that that are just blatantly doing some extremely wrong things. And uh, so we all got to work together on this for sure. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Power in numbers. Uh, get your friends and neighbors out. Educate them. Get them out and just have fun, man. I don't know anybody who hasn't gone out to the range to uh, pull the trigger a few times and haven't enjoyed themselves. You know what I mean? Definitely. Or at least appreciate why somebody else may want to enjoy such a pastime. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's any time you get out of the range. I haven't seen anybody uh, not leave the range with a smile. So it's it's always a good time. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. And so you don't miss out, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube.com. This is Code of Arms.